everyone, Sarah the Catholic Homemaker here. Today I want to share my real food eating journey, how I got started eating real food. First of all, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing so we can keep on growing this community. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video and hit the notification bell for all notifications so you know when I post, which is every Monday at 12 noon. And let's get started. So my journey started several years ago when I was not married, no kids, and I wasn't taking care of myself very well. I thought I was taking care of myself, but it was actually upon the advice of the government standards for nutrition. And so I was eating almost a vegan diet. I was eating very little animal products, no red meat, um, occasional meat here and there like chicken or so, um, maybe some other stuff or fish here and there, but I really wasn't eating that much um, meat in my diet and maybe very little dairy. I'd kind of gone to like more almond milk and stuff. Um, again, I wasn't like vegan per se, but I was eating a very low animal diet or low protein diet and my health was taking a toll for it. I was seeing an acupuncturist at the time and how I found out all these things were going wrong with me is they ordered these blood tests for me and when the blood test came back, the funny thing is is that everything looked pretty terrible except for my cholesterol. But if you know anything about the Weston Price Foundation, they actually say that having a higher cholesterol of at least 150, like a total cholesterol, actually is more protective for you. So to the conventional medicine world, um, my cholesterol actually looked pretty healthy, but everything else looked unhealthy about me. So. I say it's ironic because actually, like, if you look at it from, like, the Weston Price Foundation's perspective, my cholesterol was also bad because it should have been higher to protect me from sickness and other diseases. So, anyway, um, my iron levels were almost nothing and my hemoglobin was a 6. And the normal levels for hemoglobin are between 12 to 15, from what I recall. And a six is actually transfusion level. Now, I didn't get a, a transfusion, thank goodness, because there are some risks associated with that. Um, but I did actually heal completely naturally, and I got my levels back up to normal and above normal, actually, eventually, which is amazing. So. I had all these health problems going on with me. I had, I, I didn't realize it at the time, but I had IBS. I had polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I hadn't been diagnosed with yet, but I knew that I had problems with my cycles because I had very heavy, prolonged bleeding. Um, and I had all kinds of other symptoms that were terrible going with it, like terrible headaches terrible pain, um, so much so that I would like curl up in a ball. I couldn't really do anything. Um, nausea, like nausea to the point of, or the pain to the point of it actually making me ill, actually nauseous and throwing up from the pain. It was so bad. And that actually happens to me during labor too, but that's a whole different story. Um, I also had a bunch of skin problems. I had acne all over my face. It wasn't just, um, you know, like little pimples. It was like layers and layers of acne. I had like a first layer of like tiny little dots all over my face that you couldn't even really see unless you were like super close up. And then I had like another layer of like smaller pimples. And then I had like, um, what is it? I guess the cystic acne on top of that, which I had been trying to treat and it had gotten better like through a dermatologist, but I wasn't quite healing from the inside out just yet. Um, and I thought I was eating this super healthy diet, like um, low fat, like only eating olive oil and very little fat. Um, 
I would never touch butter or animal fat because I thought it was terrible for you. Um, I didn't know about coconut oil or anything else in those days, but um, yeah, I had a lot of health problems going on with me, especially at such a young age because I was just right out of college. And I remember the project I was working on at work, there was a client um, project that I had been working on and I noticed people that were like 20 years my senior had like light years more energy than I had as a young person right out of college. And I'm like, wow, like how do they have all this energy like at three or four o'clock and they go into the night, they come in earlier than me, they leave later than me, they're like working all the time and I can barely get through the day. And like somewhere in the back of my mind, I was thinking this isn't normal, but I just, I thought maybe it was normal. And I remember like right before getting this blood test, I went to Guatemala and I remember we were hiking up these hills. Um, it wasn't like a, a treacherous hike or anything. It was a normal kind of thing. And I would get just so winded out of breath that I had to like keep on stopping so that I could catch my breath. And I was just thinking, oh, this is my asthma. Um, but in reality, it was because I had severe anemia. And the thing about anemia is you're not getting enough oxygen into your red blood cells. And so that's why I was so out of breath from doing that. So after getting these lab results back, I was with my family. They were visiting me and my mom was just like so upset that my numbers were so low. And um, at the time I was living in Atlanta. So we were visiting the CNN center and I remember there was a Wendy's right there and my mom bought like two cheeseburgers and she's like, eat these. I'm like, I don't want to eat these. I was thinking like, these are so unhealthy. This is fast food. This is red meat, whatever. And she's like, eat these now. You need them. And I ended up listening to her and I ate them. And I did feel better, of course, because I needed that. Um, you know, and so I started to compromise a little bit. I was thinking, okay, I need to eat red meat and certain foods for a certain period of time until I get my blood work back to normal. And then I can go back to eating the way I was before and just really focus on like a healthy, nutritious way of eating to maintain all this. And over that time, I, I ate like a pretty much the same diet every day. I know I was like eating eggs. Oh, I hadn't been eating eggs before that at all. I was just eating like cereal or probably oatmeal or like fruit stuff for breakfast. It was, um, and not soaked oatmeal or anything. It was just really terrible breakfast I was eating. <laughs> and so changing that up, I was like eating eggs for breakfast. I was eating two eggs a day at least. And I would eat like steak and spinach for dinner and like whatever else that's going with that maybe potatoes or something and for lunch I know I would sometimes have like a spinach salad with the red meat on it and I was like always eating red meat and I started to feel better pretty quickly with that and along that same timeline I had just gotten seven cavities when I was at the dentist. Well, the dentist said that I had seven cavities and I was like, oh my gosh, I've only had cavities one other time in my life. And that was like, um, about a year, year, year and a half to two at the most before that, that was the first time in my life I had ever gotten cavities and I got five all at once. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I, I've been so good at brushing my teeth my entire life. Why am I all of a sudden getting all these cavities? 
And I guess it was like my diet catching up to me because I didn't really eat the best in college. Um, and that's kind of when I started to eat healthier, I was kind of going down like a stricter path of healthy. Like I said at the beginning, going more towards like a vegan or a plant-based diet, making me sick, making me more unhealthy. Fast forward back to when I got seven cavities one to two years later at this new dentist. And I was like, this is crazy. But he showed me the cavities on there. I mean, whether or not I had them is kind of up for debate, but um, I know I did have decay on my teeth and I was searching for natural remedies for tooth decay during that time. And I came upon Ramiel Miguel's video. He wrote Cure Tooth Decay about Dr. Weston A. Price and his travels. This is his book in case you guys are new and have never heard of it before. This is Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Dr. Weston A. Price. He was a dentist in the 1930s who traveled the world. And so Ramiel Nagel was talking about Dr. Price's travels and this book and his book in there. And he showed pictures of the most beautiful people, indigenous people. I'm gonna find some pictures. Okay, these are the isolated and the modern or modernized Polynesians. So the top two are the isolated um, Polynesians and you can just see like how beautiful and happy they look and how straight, white and beautiful their teeth are. And the, the two individuals below, you can see like eating the modern diet, it actually made their teeth crooked. And I, I think this is probably more to do with the parents because I think the parents switched over to a modern diet with the store foods. And they, even though their parents had great genetics, they didn't pass it on to their children. So this is kind of, um, his book in a way talks about epigenetics because as I said, like their parents had these, like they were beautiful, they had these wonderful genes, but they weren't passed on to their children, so to speak, because their children came out with crooked teeth and a bunch of cavities and other health problems that went along with that too. But I was just truly amazed at this video and I was like, you know, I'm gonna skip Cure Tooth Decay. I'm gonna go straight to the source, uh, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. So I bought this book and I read it and I never turned back. I, there, I just discovered that this is truly the truth of how we should be eating because even in this book, Dr. Price talks about how their diets, the indigenous people's diets very around the world. So they didn't eat like one particular diet. They didn't like, oh, I'm eating strawberries every day. Like, oh, I'm, I'm only eating steak this day. It, it wasn't like a strict diet like that. Like everybody has to eat like that. It's, they eat what was, whatever was available to them in their area. They also didn't eat any store foods. They ate the entire animal, nose to tail. They ate the fat, the skin, the organs, um, sometimes the blood, or maybe always the blood, I don't know, because it talks about that with the Maasai warriors eating the blood from the calves. Um, so they weren't just simply eating the muscle meat like we do as Americans. They were eating the entire animal and not wasting it. And they also had a wide variety of plant foods in their diet, which was in their area. And a lot of them, if it was available to them, ate fish and they weren't just eating like the fish fillet, they were eating the head and like the glands and, and um, you know, making the bones into stock. So these are things, um, especially in the American culture, we can kind of be afraid of, but those are the most nutritious parts of the animal and what make you vibrantly healthy. So it was kind of hard for me to grasp at first because I didn't grow up eating liver or pate or anything, but I have 
grown to like them and to crave them too. I, I'm like, if I haven't eaten liver in a while, I can tell. So it's something I try to include in my diet once a week and sometimes more. And anyway, so back to when I was starting my journey, I read this book and I was like, there's no other way. I can't go back to the way I was eating because that was what was making me sick. I've been told this lie my entire life about the way we should eat, but it's actually making us all very sick. So I am so grateful and glad that I discovered this book. I believe that God led me to it and hopefully to share it with others so that they may not suffer and that they may also be vibrantly healthy like I have discovered and also like pass that on to my children. Um, another thing about our modern lives, especially in the United States, is pregnancy and like how our children end up being. And we think it's like all dependent on genetics, but really it's dependent on the diet of the mother and father before conception and then the diet of the mother during pregnancy and you know also throughout the child's um, their childhood and through their life but those early years are especially important like through preconception conception like pregnancy those are very important and then you know when the child is a baby and very young um, it's very important to feed them very good food especially like for good formation of the teeth and the bone structure. Um, at least it is thought to mostly be just developed between pregnancy and maybe even preconception is kind of what lines things up to have like the most healthy outcomes for everyone. So that is what I did for my children, for my pregnancies, and I certainly credit their good health and um, lack of health problems due to the way I ate before pregnancy, during, and after, and how I continue to feed them to this day. We hear about so many health problems with young children now, and that's just not normal. Just because it's happening to everybody does not mean that it's normal. So I just hope like one thing that you may take away from my video is that you have some hope from this, that you can have a little control on the health of you and your family because there are ways of turning things around too. Even if you didn't know it up until now, you can go forward and try to make some little changes or big changes, whatever you decide. And I hope you liked this video and let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear if you have started on a real food journey as well and what led you to it. So until next time, bye and may God bless you and your family.